Okay, let's start with the new notebook and learn about functions. Functions are something that takes zero or more input, does something with those inputs, and returns an output. Functions are core to doing a lot of data processing in Python. We already use some functions. Remember, we have used print, which is a function where it takes some input and prints it. So that's a built-in function. When you're doing data analysis, sometimes you'll have to write your own functions. Functions are helpful because when you're trying to automate stuff, you say, I want to do the same processing for 1,000 items. So you write a function that takes one item, processes it, and now you can run that function on all 1,000 items. So that's why you need to learn how to write functions that do your data processing. Let's learn the syntax of functions. So we are working on the notebook functions, 05 functions. As I'm explaining this, please pay attention here, and you can have an exercise afterwards. So the syntax of the function is this. You define a function using the def keyword. Def stands for define, def space, name of the function, open brackets. You can give the parameters that the function takes. A function can take zero inputs, one inputs, two inputs, many number of inputs. Whatever inputs you need to give, you can give a comma separated list of those, colon, and then you have an indented block that defines what happens in the function. Once you're done with it, you return the output. And that means you call a function with some inputs, you'll do, use those input, do some processing and return the output value. So let's write a simple function. So here we have a very simple function called greet. This is the name of the function. It takes one parameter called name and the function does something that say, I'll just create a greeting, hello plus name, and then I'll return greeting. A very simple function. We will define this. So now this exists in our program. So in our program, now we can call greet just like we called print or other functions. We'll say greet class. What will happen now is when I call this function, Python will say, does something like greet exist? It says yes, greet has already been defined. And it says, oh, it takes one parameter. So we'll take the first value that we pass to the function and say, I will assign the value class to this variable name. And the function will do its thing. It will create a greeting called greeting, hello plus whatever name we passed, and it will return that. So, and we'll save this output. And let's see what output we got. And this is hello class. Now, the advantage of a function is that we can call it with different variables, so different inputs. So instead of class, I can say greet world, same function will now output hello world. I didn't have to write the whole thing, right? I can just give a different input and the function will take that and use that to create a new output. Here, whatever we specified name, it can be anything. I can just say X and I'll need to use X as a variable. So whatever input will be saved here. It's the same thing, right? So you can have that input. Let's see the example of another function. I have a function like this, def print greeting, which doesn't take any input. You can have functions that take no input at all. It can just do something. Done. So this function has been defined now, and I can just say print greeting. I can call this. So this function doesn't take any input, so I didn't give any input. And whenever I say print greeting, it'll say hello. world. Right? So this is an example of a function that doesn't take any input and always does something. There are functions that can take multiple inputs. So I can have a function. Let's take an example from our first code that we wrote in the first thing. We'll say I have this population and I have the area. And I want to write a function that can compute the density. So I can just write a function, calculate density. This function will take input population, area, and now it does something with it. So we'll say density is population divided by area and into this. So now we should be able to call this function with any two numbers. So I can say population is 1000, area is 10, what is the density? And I'll try to print the output. So we'll just assign the output here and we'll print it. It doesn't work. It came none. I expected 
thousand divided by ten. Why didn't it work? Can anybody spot the mistake in my code? Yes, the, the reason this didn't work is because I forgot a return statement. I did something, but I didn't return what I wanted to return. And that's why it says, oh, I call the function. I didn't get anything back. And that's the reason we caught none. We're going to return the density. And now you can see it returns it. So now we can call this again and say, I want to get destiny, uh, destiny density of this population variable and this area square mile. And you get the answer. Right? So now you can define your functions that take zero, one, two, or more inputs. Do something with those inputs, return the output, and you can use those in your code. Let's write a function that does something useful. We have in when you're doing geospatial analysis, one of the problems that is very common is to convert coordinates from one type from, to another. There are coordinates sometimes are represented as degree minutes, seconds. And when you want to use this in a GIS, you may have to convert it to decimal degrees or vice versa. So we'll see how we can use Python for doing that kind of conversion. For that first, let's learn about the different coordinate systems. Some of you may not have kind of full understanding of different coordinate formats and precisions, et cetera. So let's learn more about it. In GIS, when we are working with coordinates, we can represent the coordinates in many different ways. To locate any place on Earth, we need at least two coordinates, X and Y, and sometimes Z. And having those two coordinates, we can uniquely locate a place. Now, what is the format of those X and Y coordinates? You can measure the coordinates of a place either using a geographic CIS. So you say, I have Earth. I'll assume Earth is a sphere or an ellipsoid. Divide the Earth into grids of longitude and latitude. And I'll measure how far away the point is from each latitude grid or la longitude grid. And I'll get a number that is, this is the latitude and longitude of the place. So that system of representing the location as latitude and longitude is known as a geographic CRS. You also have projected CRS where you take Earth, project it into a flat surface using a projection suitable for a region. You get X and Y coordinates and you can measure the, the X and Y coordinates of a place in reference to that X and Y projected coordinate system and represent those coordinates. We'll focus on geographic CRS light long. In geographic CRS, longitude is your X coordinates. Longitudes are the vertical grids. So they are your X coordinates. Latitude are the horizontal grids, which are your Y coordinates. And you can store this into two primary formats. If you want to store the value of a coordinate, sometimes people store it as degree, minute, seconds. Sometimes people store it as decimal degrees. And our exercise is to write a function that does conversion between those two. So let's understand this format first. This is a diagram of you know, Earth, and you can define your axis like this. X axis is equator. So it says this is a zero line. This is a zero value of X axis. You can define your Y axis as a prime meridian and Greenwich line. Sometimes people use different values of the zero longitude, but most of them you are using the zero degree longitude as the prime meridian. And you have your grids like this. And you can take any place. So I can say, I want to know what are the coordinates of this place. And you can say, how far away is it from each of those grids. So how far up north is it from equator? How far away east or west is it from my prime meridian? And once I measure this, I can get the coordinates. You can store the coordinates in three parts. So you can say, I have this many degrees that are you know, 360 degrees in a circle. So you can say I have 360 degrees. I'll further divide each degree into 60 parts so I can measure more precision. So you can divide each degree into 60 minutes and further divide each minute into 60 seconds. And this allows you to capture very high precision for each coordinate. Latitude values go from zero at the equator all the way to 90, plus 90 at North Pole, minus 90 at South Pole. It goes from plus zero to plus 180 uh, towards East, and minus 180 towards West. And you, if the value is above equator, you'll say this is North. If it's below equator, you'll say South. If it's west of prime meridian, you say west and east of twice. Right? So this is kind of the system that surveys use to represent coordinates. This kind of system is good for physical maps and displays because you can have three numbers that can display or capture the coordinates with a very high precision. 
So if you get an old map and you have some coordinates, it's likely that you want to show coordinates instead of displaying things like 29.5925678, you'll just say 29 degrees, 59 minutes, right? It's just more concise and you can capture the data for high precision. So if you, for example, go to an airport, you might see some sign saying that this gate or this runway is at this kind of coordinates. So the way to read this coordinates is this is the coordinate of the city of Bangalore in India. It says 12 degrees, 58 minutes, so 58 parts of a degree and 20.7912 seconds. So the single quote is as minutes, double quotes is seconds. And this is north, so this is north of the equator. Similarly, the uh, longitude is 77 degrees, 34 minutes, 50.3148 seconds east of Prime Meridian. And so you will see coordinates like this often. These are great for physical displays, but not so good for GIS, because when you want to use this coordinates in a GIS or any analysis, GIS doesn't like this kind of fog. What GIS wants is coordinates in decimal degrees. So you just want the floating point number. So if you want to use this coordinates, you need to convert them from your DMS, DMS seconds, to decimal degrees. So decimal degrees is a simpler system. You have north and south, which is north is positive, south is negative. Longitude east is positive, west is negative. And this kind of system is good for data storage and analysis. So whenever you are using data in your GIS, you need to convert those coordinates. So we'll learn how to convert it. The conversion is quite simple. So let's take this example of the lag in long coordinates. If you have a coordinate like 12 degrees, 58 minutes, 12, 20 seconds, you say the value in decimal degrees is 12 degrees, 58 divided by 60 degrees, plus 20 divided by 3600. And you add all those parts and you get your final value. And you can say the top and the bottom values are the same. They're just stored in different formats. But this ones are more suitable for storing in a GIS. So we'll now kind of build code that will take input of this degree minute seconds and convert this into decimal degrees. And we'll see how to do this using functions in Python. Okay, so back in our notebook, we have defined a function EMS to decimal, which takes three inputs. We give the degrees, minutes, and seconds. This function will take those values and will convert them to decimal degrees. The formula is very simple. Degrees plus minutes by 60, seconds by 3600. The formula changes slightly if the degrees are positive or negative. If the degree was a negative number, then you need to add negative sign at the for each each term. So if the degree was minus 10 degrees for six minutes, 50 seconds, you'll say minus 10 minus the degrees minutes divided by 60 minus seconds divided by 3600. If the value is positive, we do this. So now we know how to implement conditions. So we say if degrees is less than zero, use this formula else use this formula and you return the result. So we have defined this function. And now we have this function. You can just call this function with any values. So let's just use this and say, I want to convert this to decimal degrees using this. So let's use this. So we want to convert 12 degrees, 58 minutes and 20 seconds into decimal degrees. We have a function. So we'll say DMS to decimal the first part is degrees, so 12 degrees, 58 minutes, 20 seconds. And we'll store the output in the variable called result, and we'll print it. And it would convert that. Now, since we are a function, we can just call it with different values and we'll get different answer. So let's do the next one. We'll take this and convert it into So we can say here 77, 34, 50, and it gives us less degrees. Here, you do, if you want to check if the function is behaving correctly, if you say my input is negative. So I want to represent a negative latitude, longitude, negative 77 degrees, 34 minutes, 50 seconds. If I give a negative number here, I should get a negative number back. Right? So my function is behaving correctly. Let's try an exercise where we have shown you how to in give input to this function as numbers. But what if you had a string like this? Can you extract the relevant numbers, call the function to do the conversion? So Vigna, you can explain the exercise. 